I am currently on school holidays. Hi everyone, welcome to Talk and Chalk. I'm Beck. It's holiday time here at the moment. This is the middle of a two week break that we've got here in New South Wales, Australia. Spring break, although we don't do spring break quite the same way as America. Spring break, y'all! That's cliched. Moving on. <laughs> However, we do have break time here, which means that we get to rest, we get to rejuvenate and get prepared for term four as well. And I wanted to do this video in the holidays so that anyone watching could actually take the time to reflect on it, to think about how it applies to themselves and then possibly maybe make some lifestyle changes if they think they need to. I've been doing some things recently to productively try to counteract some of those work-life imbalances that I discovered I had going on in my life. So today I'm going to talk about the five key signs that made me realize I had a poor work-life balance and how I've been trying to change some of the things that I do in my life to make it more balanced. Uh, before I get into that though, I'm going to remind everyone that all of my subscription buttons and everything are in the description below. So you have to click on the little icon that drops it open. So if you're watching this in a different form of social media, you might need to open this up into YouTube to be able to see those things. Um, and if this applies to you or if you find that this resonates with you or if it's helpful in any way, the like button is always there. The feedback is always appreciated. So. I wrote some things down in my trusty notebook, as I always do, and I'm going to concentrate very hard today to not say um as many times as I normally do. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I probably will say um a lot. If you're one of my regular followers, thank you for the continued support. Thank you for all the messages that I always get from people saying that they found it beneficial. Believe me, the feedback is much appreciated. So five signs I found. I'm sure there were more signs in my life that, that showed me I was doing things in a way that probably wasn't the most mentally or physically healthy way to do things. I'm a mum of three. I have a full-time job. I'm an assistant principal, um, which, me which means that work doesn't stop at work. I bring things home and I've brought things home even when I was a classroom teacher. Being an executive doesn't make that any different really. I guess it's just the type of work that comes home that changes. When I was a teacher, it was very much a classroom teacher. It was very much centered on my kids and my classroom. So making resources and creating costumes and creating different activities and hands-on things and experiments that I could take into the classroom. Now that I'm executive, it's much more admin driven, lots of stuff on the computer. There's still elements of making actual things and designing things, but I guess a lot of that happens on site. I guess maybe that's come down to me refining my practices and knowing what is appropriate to bring home and what should stay at school. Practices have now changed as well. So in terms of marking and things like that, really people shouldn't be taking home a ton of marking. I know that's different for secondary. You've got lots of assignments and things more in the primary aspect of things. You know, we're not bringing tons of books home to mark in that kind of aspect. It's not quite the same. So first sign though, uh, I realized that my health was just not my number one priority which is not a safe thing. We've read the articles now, especially about that principal who passed away at her desk. And there's lots of other principals out there and, and teachers who have been um, hurt on the job. And that's not necessarily through a fault of their own. It could be because they've been in bad health or because you know something else that's happened. But me realizing that, <laughs> you've heard me rant about this before, I'm carrying extra weight from having three kids and really I probably should have, I have lost some and then gained it back when I had my third bub. And it's hard to lose that weight, especially as I get older. And I know I'm not defined by my weight. My body is not all of who I am. However, it does impact my health. It means that, you know, my sleep patterns become different. It means that I think differently about clothes that I buy, or it might impact how I feel emotionally inside this skin. And at this point, current way that my body is I don't like the way that I feel in this skin <laughs> and so really that's on me that's on me to eat better and exercise more and I like food <laughs> I find it hard to to restrict my eating habits pizza is my favorite food and if you work with me you'll know that I enjoy 
any of the morning teas and things that we have. So for me, I found that all I was doing was the only times I was eating healthy or exercising is when I consciously had to actually think about it. It's not, it hasn't been habit for me. And this is not to say that I eat completely bad or anything like that. It's just bad habits that I've picked up that I haven't gotten rid of, I guess. And because it's not part on my priority list, I'm not making recipes. I'm not making eating charts or, and I'm not allocating time for exercise properly. So I found that I'd just kind of squeeze it in where I could. A friend of me, um, a friend of mine, sorry, gave me an elliptical. So I I had been using that just really in, intermittently, maybe on the weekend, maybe once during the week. And it's only a 15 minute cycle that I do on there. And really 15 minutes, I should be able to do that every day. How can I not prioritize 15 minutes every day to be a little bit healthier, to get that exercise? So what I'm doing about that now is I have allocated time now that I'm going to use, that I have been using the elliptical. So certain nights or afternoons that I know I can get away from work because there aren't staff meetings or, or, or training days or anything like that. Those are my days to get on the elliptical. And every night I do um, this yoga videos that are on YouTube. I'll link, it's Yoga with Adrienne. I highly recommend it. She's got beginner's videos that you start off with nice and easy super easy just to get back into the groove, which was good for me because I could I could kind of feel the muscle memory starting to kick in uh, from when I was a highly engaged dancer. And now I'm onto some of the more harder videos. So, and, and there's different timings on them too. So like you, if you type in yoga with Adrian, you'll see it, you can subscribe. And if you like videos, then you can go back and do them again. What I do is I often type in a certain amount of time that I know that I can contribute to it. So I'll put in yoga with Adrian 30 minutes and I'll do one of those sequences. If I've left it too late and gotten distracted and I've realized, oh my gosh, I've only got like 10 minutes that I can fit in here. She's got sequences that go for seven minutes, 10 minutes. I can do one of those. It's really good mentally as well because it's all about breathing and self care and guidance and just a lot of the things that she says very wise. <laughs> She's got some funny moments and quirky moments in there as well. But I just really like the fact that she'll say something along the lines of take the deepest breath that you've taken today and forget about the to-do list. I love just being told forget about the to-do list. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a silly thing, but it works. I really like it. So I'll make sure I link her channel below because that's really, really good. Um, another thing I've done too, and I realized is that I, 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 I was viewing massages as a treat and I guess this comes from past experiences. I never had massages till I think I got married and then hubby treated me to a gift certificate. He did. It was our first year wedding anniversary. First year is paper. Uh, he got me something else as well, but that was part of the paper gift. Side note, I got him an autographed copy of the Lord of the Rings script. That was my paper gift. Moving on. We're movie fans. So after that, I always just viewed it as a treat. So I'd ask for a gift certificate for a birthday or anniversary or Christmas or something like that. And that's the only time I'd get a massage. It's only recently that I realized uh, I belong to the teacher's health, um, health union, health membership, health fund, health fund. That's the word. It's holidays. I don't know my words. The health fund, teacher's health fund. And in the package that we've got, you have um, a certain amount that you can claim from remedial massage. And believe me, remedial massage is something that I need using a laptop consistently. I know I don't have it adjusted at the right height and I'll go from computer to laptop to tablet device. And I don't like working at the one desk. I do have a desk that is mine at school, but I don't like being locked in that one space where people feel maybe it's a little bit awkward to access me or uh, I just like being in different places. So I'll take my device and move around the school and work in different places around the school. So much easier that way. And you know, it's refreshing to be able to just move around and work in a spot that I like. And there's lots of beautiful sights in my school too. So I can sit at a particular window in the booth and look out at the garden or whatever. So it means though that my neck and shoulders and stuff are sometimes quite tense. Now that I've been doing the yoga, it's a little less strenuous, but because I've always viewed going and getting a massage as a treat, I haven't actually seen it as taking care of my health. 
So now what I do is I, I know claim wise financially, I can use at least one a month and I'm not going to exhaust all of my funds um, by the end of the year. And you know, massages can cost a lot depending on where you go. So that's why I like to use the remedial one. That's still not going to stop me from using one as a treat as well and getting a full body massage, spending the extra money, you know, treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> going and getting something fun done. So that's something else I'm doing to combat that now is just allocating at least once a month I go and get a remedial massage. So this is helping me mentally, helping me de-stress, helping me physically and just making sure that I'm putting that in the agenda so that I'm not, you know, forgetting to take care of myself. So second one, second uh, sign that I knew my work-life balance wasn't the greatest, was just my family time. So family time, I'm talking about quality family time, not coming home and having dinner with them, that sort of a thing. I'm talking about quality family time, actually allocating time to sit and be with them and not have the phone going, and, uh, you know, not pay attention to emails or anything like that, uh, and just have time together. So I, I realized that, you know, even if I was taking the kids out for, you know, milkshake or something, I was still checking my phone, checking my emails because I was worried things were piling up or, or coming up that I need, needed to sort of focus my attention on. So now um, what we do is we, we try and map out the calendar for the month because it can't just be on me for family time. We're a family, five people here. So we've all got to have input into this and figure out how it's actually going to work for everyone and the schedule. We've got, we've got, very chaotic schedule in terms of um, speech therapy and occupational therapy and then you know there's netball training and netball games and there's always events that come up as well so there's always something on the calendar that needs to happen so uh, Facebook events are great because then I like the fact that I can save it it's there and I can put it on the calendar if it's something that we think we want to go to uh, financially it's less stressful to do those events that are free uh, we're a single income family so we like to you know try and make sure we're not digging ourselves in too deep when it comes to things like that. You don't have to spend money, you know, to have fun with the family, but we also don't want to spend all weekend at home, um, just sitting around doing things at home either. We like to get out and about, and which is good for my son as well in terms of his social skills. You know what? It's good for any kid in terms of social skills and just learning how to behave in public and use your manners. <laughs> so what we do is we have the, the calendar now and we slot those things in and then we see what's free. So what I try and do is alternate my Friday afternoons now because no one wants to stay back at work on a Friday anyway. So I try and alternate one Friday is for me to come home and I take the kids and we go and get frappes. It used to just be milkshakes and then I introduced them to a taste of my frappe and now they act all hoity-toity and want their own frappe because they're tasty. Sometimes I just get them that frozen Coke spider thing because it's only $2.00. But now what I do is I know that's my allocated time to do that. I'm not looking at my phone unless I'm taking pictures of the kids. I'm not worried about the to-do list because I know that's my time with the kids. So we usually go to Macca's, have a frappe, and we pick one that has a good playground. And then we go out and have a play. And it's good for my little two-year-old because he's learning to use everything that's there. And we play chasings and I get time with all of them. And that's good allocated time. Now... Whether you, whether you decide that's quality time or not, it's up to you. For me, it is because it means that I'm only thinking about my kids. I'm only spending time with my kids. And there's other times that I do that. This isn't the only time that I spend with my kids, but I know I'm not neglecting that time because I've allocated it in. We also allocate in Saturday afternoons is family movie afternoon. So we've been going through the X-Men movies because two of my kids are named after X-Men characters. And we sit down, we have popcorn, we have chips, we have chocolate. Not so great for my diet regime, but you know, I'm not gonna deprive myself. I wanna have fun in my life as well. Uh, we tried those new chocolates with the CCs in them. They're a bit weird. It was okay, just a bit weird. Anyway, so we've been doing that. So that's Saturday afternoon. And now the kids get excited about that. We're talking about what's coming next because we've been through enough X-Men movies. We can't do the later ones, um, some of the later ones because they're, um, for older kids, especially the latest Logan movie, and we're moving on to the next thing now. So we've been talking about maybe going through the Pirates of the Caribbean movies and uh, and watching those. So you know that's the next thing we need to do. And 
we allocate those other times as well to maybe go to the play center, go to the park, go to the, we've got a bicycle education center local to us at Campbelltown, which is really good. The kids love it there. And, you know, we can go and spend time together and learn some road safety rules at the same time. So the difficult part with all of this is time just with me and my hubby. We, we used to go out all the time to movies and everything, you know, before you have kids and you're splashing money on different things and we have kids. We still had uh, grandparents around to help babysit so hubby and I could go out, but now both my parents and his have moved to a distance away that's too far to do babysitting. And uh, the family that we do have close by, for various reasons, are, are una unable to babysit. They've got their own reasons and I absolutely agree with them. <laughs> and plus it's a lot to ask for someone to babysit three kids, especially a toddler and one on the spectrum. So hubby and I haven't been out together for like a date night since before my youngest was born. And I think it was while I was pregnant for his birthday. We did. We went out to that awesome seafood restaurant above the Sydney fish markets. Amazing food there. And then we went to the casino for a bit of a punt afterwards. So that was in 2015. August 2015 was the last time hubby and I had a date night without the kids. So that was a long time ago. And that can be a bit straining. But... We know that as the kids get older, that's not going to be the same for us. So it's just a matter of time and then, you know, we'll be able to do those things again. So we, oh wait, no, I tell a lie. We went, we went to a wedding. Does a wedding count? I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't really date night. We got to go out, I guess. We ate. We had, saw friends. <laughs> that was in 2006. 16, 17 was my brother and sister-in-law's wedding and now I can't remember what, my, what year they got married. I want to say 2017. I'm going with 2017. Early 2017. I'm rambling now. Let's move on. So anyway, for Hannah, what we do is now each night when the kids go to bed, we allocate time to have a cup of tea, watch a TV show together and have a chat before I go off to do work or yoga or he does his various things as well. So that's some time we allocate in there. Uh, other times that I've done is allocated in obviously Friday nights is my night for D&D, Dungeons and Dragons and um, the alternate Fridays that I don't take the kids for a frappe, I go with my colleagues for milkshakes to the club around the corner. And it's nice to just go away and have a chat and have a, you know, some time together to just chill because ultimately I love the people I work with. So it's not like I'm trying to run away from them at the end of the day. All right, let's move on. Third sign. Third sign was I was raging at doing chores on the weekend. I mean, I'll be honest, I threw some tantrums about the fact that there was chores on the weekends. My, my hubby is a stay at home dad. He does a wonderful job with our kids. You know, he does all the lunches, he cooks all of our dinners, um, we do washing together on the weekend and he usually um, hangs it out um, first thing on a Monday so that it's done, uh, you know, depending on the weather and, you know, the kids are now old enough they contribute with the chores sort of throughout the week. So when it got to the weekend I found I, don't, I was just having a tantrum about putting clothes away and having to do dishes and I know that seems really, really, really petty and childish of me but it was just my sign that I, I didn't have enough of a balance of what was going on because I was because I had been doing so much all week long when I got to the weekend I just wanted to you know crash and chill and I didn't have that chance to do that because I knew these other things needed to be done and it was very very frustrating so I had this conversation with hubby and we've looked at you know what what I'm doing through the week as well and what I need to allocate in terms of getting that nice balance because I've still got to contribute to the house. That's, it's not like I'm trying to get out of it, but it just felt like that those chores were taking up too much of the weekend. So um, we're trying to train the kids now to fold and put their own clothes away. So at least they can put their clothes away during the week. Um, I can still put mine and bubs away. Hubby has a hard time with um, the, our youngest's clothes because he's got such big hands and their little clothes to fold and if you've got bits that are tucked in and you can't pull them out so I'll do mine and bubs <laughs> and um 
and just to help teaching the kids as well to be responsible about some of that cleaning stuff. So it's, it's not much of a difference, but at least I guess in terms of my balance, I feel like we're all sharing the load a little bit. And again, I know that sounds very, very selfish on my part, but this is where I'm at and this is what's working. So now, you know, Saturday morning or whatever, I get up and, and I do some dishes and I put some clothes away and it's no big deal because I know everyone's doing, you know, their part. And also I've had those breaks throughout the week that don't make me feel like I need an, I need to just do nothing on the lounge all day. Um, fourth sign is that I, I only see my friends really at weddings, birthdays and funerals which sounds a little tragic. And I, I guess I've tried to fit in coffee dates with people um, that live local to me, but a lot of my friends live really far away. And that makes it harder because that then makes it costly as well. You, you know, you've got to pay to travel to go and visit each other. And if it's too far away to travel back in the same day, then you've got accommodation. And yes, we've all got, you know, lounges and beds and things that we could put each other up in, but we've all got kids now as well. And it just becomes very onerous and feel like you're imposing, even though they're your friends, it just starts to get a bit awkward. And honestly, this is one that I've been stuck on. I'm not sure how to improve on this one, especially when distance is a factor. Um, this one I'm still thinking of, but yeah, trying to fit in coffee dates and trying to fit in, you know, Skypes with friends. I try and do a Skype with my parents every second Sunday and yeah, that kind of helps. Um, to sort of keep in touch. I'm in my head. I'm imagining that as the kids get older and they're doing their own thing Then we'll have more time to spend with our friends as well Kind of the way we did before we had kids. I don't know about that one. Maybe if you've got older kids you could let me know and Fifth reason I knew <laughs> fifth sign that I had sorry that I didn't have this be best work-life balance Was just that I felt I felt guilty when I decided that I didn't want to do schoolwork tonight just no, I don't want to do it tonight. I felt like I had to have a tantrum in order to just not do schoolwork that night. And then I felt guilty that I wasn't doing something. And this in no way whatsoever is something that has been an expectation of my employer or my principal. This is all stuff I put on myself and I'm sure I'm not the only one that puts it on themselves, themselves this way. So, and I think it's just because it's become a habit that when you're a teacher, you get up early, you go to work, you get your classroom set up, you get everything set up, you teach all day long, you do your playground duty, you do a choir rehearsal, you barely have time to pee, you get to the end of the day and then you mark and clean up and put up displays and then you come home and then you do more work on the laptop to prepare for everything else that we're doing at the moment. You assess, you analyse. Um, if you're applying for jobs, you spend all night putting together applications, which means that when it gets to a point where we're not doing that, we f it feels weird that we don't have something to do or that we're choosing not to do something. It feels wrong and we shouldn't feel guilty about that, not at all. So the way I've tried to combat that is I will only work on tasks at night now that I feel are absolutely urgent, that someone else is relying on me to do, or it's something that's a personal project. So for example, the, the Talk and Chalk channel is, is a completely personal project for me. It's almost like a hobby for me. It's what I do instead of going to dance class and only because, well, it's easier to sit here on my bedroom floor and video myself talking. <laughs> so there's other thing, pet projects that I've got though, you know, I, I'm tinkering with the idea of turning this channel, well not turning it, but expanding this channel into podcasts. So I would use the audio from my videos and put them down as podcasts. Give me some feedback in the comments below if you think that's a bad or a good idea. Um, you know, anything that I'm doing with this, the stuff that I share on Twitter or I go on Twitter chats and the things that I share on the pages, you know, that sort of a thing. Um, those are the only things that I'll, I'll work on at night time when it comes to work stuff. So at least that way, if I go, do you know what? I'm not doing anything tonight. It's because I know there's nothing absolutely urgent or that someone else isn't relying on me to get it done because it means I can pick it up at work the next day. If it's something that I can pick up at work the next day and it's not going to impact negatively on someone else that I haven't done it that night, then that's the way that I'm going to do it. Um, we also make sure that 10 p.m. is my cutoff time. Hubby used to give me the bedtime of 11.15 <laughs> before we had kids and now we've got kids it's 10 o'clock. I'm still not in bed until usually 11, sometimes 11.30, midnight, and that's just because of me feeding the dog, spending time with her or dealing with Bub who woke up and needed a nappy change or just, you know, mucking around on my phone or whatever. Uh, some nights I'll get to bed at 10.30, other ones not so much, and then I read. 
So I read at night before I go to sleep. Some pages I get through, a, some pages, some nights I get through a page before I fall asleep and sometimes I get through a few chapters just depending on how tired I am. Um, and I've picked up some new ones these holidays to get through. So the orange one here, you've heard me speak about before. I've still got Teacher by um, Gabby Stroud and I've got Eddie Wu's new one as well to read. So um, that's got me covered for a little while. And these change all the time, these books behind me. <laughs> I don't get to read through a lot very quick. I'm not a slow reader, but I wouldn't call myself a fast reader as well. Uh, so those are the five key things that I found in my life that made me recognize I needed to, to change some of the things that I was doing, mainly the ways I was prioritizing my time. So uh, like I said, you know, um, I don't think work should dominate our lives like that, but I do what I do because I love my job. I love the people I work with and I want to make sure I'm, I'm good at it because I love what I do. This isn't, I don't know if anyone feels like this is an expectation. Um, I know sometimes we feel like we have to justify getting the holidays that we get and it's because we work so hard all year long. And do you know what, when you, when you think about it, all those people that talk about a nine to five job, most of us are at work eight till four. There's no different to a nine to five job and we don't get an hour break for lunch and we don't get to leave site to do things. We don't get to slot dentist appointments in throughout the day and chop out and come back in again. You know, our job is full on. And those people who keep saying, you know, you've got 12 weeks holiday a year, we know we work through it. Even if you say, because these holidays I've allocated the first week to doing no work. And then the second week is the week that I can get some stuff done. Hubby's told me I only, I'm only allowed to go into school two days these holidays. <laughs> he put his foot down and said, no, it's family time, holiday time. You do what you need to do, but you're only getting two days to do it. Um, might sound harsh, but, but I know it's what I need as well. Otherwise I would be saying I want to go in there more and more and more. And it's just going to take away time from the family. It's not because I want to get away from the family. It's just because I've got this sense of urgency that things need to be done. Um, and that's on me. Um, I'm just looking at my notebook to make sure I didn't forget anything that I've written down, but it doesn't look like I have. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. If you've made changes in your life that you think are absolutely helpful, that you think would help me or help others, please pop it in the comments below. Um, share this video, tag it with anyone that you think might benefit from it. I think during the holidays, this is your chance to definitely catch up on some rest and relaxation. Get ahead of jobs if you think that helps you throughout the term. Um, because ultimately you've got to decide what's best for you. A lot of people think that it's about time management. I personally think it's more about prioritizing your time, not about analyzing how you use your time. Just set that list of priorities. What comes first? What's most urgent and important for you? And please don't put your health all the way to the bottom. Um, I highly recommend putting family and health up at the top there, and then you decide what aspects of your work belong in that list as well because ultimately you can't do your job if you're dead <laughs> and that's really not the greatest note to leave you on but that's where I'm going to leave it today so I'll put my subscription button down at the bottom here if you haven't subscribed yet you just hover over that and click to subscribe I'll put another one of my videos at the top there and I hope you're all enjoying a lovely holiday break thanks everyone bye